Hey everybody, welcome to another star reveal video, the third one I've done. Apologies for the last one, my camera is on, and my mug just in the, the bottom corner, covering a card. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to rectify it, I was out of town for a day, so... Uh, yeah, apologies for that, that I covered the bottom card. You can go and search it anyway, it didn't affect the stars at all, right? Anyway, I've remembered to turn it off this time, in time for our Priest, Rogue, and finally Shaman cards. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, Priest has got probably the most interesting of packages. Uh, most classes just got a bundle of cards together, like, you know, you do the rest with it. This one is actually pretty defined in what they want you to do with it. There is clearly this Dragon package with Clay Matriarch, Fly Off the Shelves, Scale Replica, and Timewinder Zarima. Now, they've added a bunch of dragons to the neutral set, and actually there were just a lot of dragons in neutral anyway, so I do think you can put together a Dragon Priest list, that is, you know, reasonable. I, I, I like Scale Replica, I think it's very good. Has light tutoring in it to maybe get out your Zarima if you run pretty cheap dragons. Fly off the shelves to clear opponent's boards. Uh, Clay Matriarch is four dragons basically in one for Zarima as well. Because as a reminder, it is on summoned for Zarima, not played. So anything that death rattles and summons a dragon, for example, that will trigger Zarima. Anyway. All this being said and done, and this might be some spicy takes for Priest. Three stars. I don't think any of these are going to get beyond the tier three deck. Now, in the past, we've had open the way gates in Mage, right? That gave you an extra turn once you completed the quest. And that is pretty obnoxious, and it's also obnoxious in Wild. So you might be saying, how is this going to be, you know, not super busted? Well, having an extra turn in Mage... It's very different to having an extra term in Priest. Most of the dragons in Priest are statted defensively than offensively. Sure, some of the neutral ones are a little bit more offensive, but I simply think that gaining that extra turn won't allow you to burst down your opponent to kill them. Uh, so for that reason alone, you'll eventually end up in a situation where I think you're basically going to be playing an arena dragon deck after you've done your Zerima turn. And if you don't kill them on the Zerima turn, you're out of luck, kid. Anyway, and as a reminder again, it's once per game, the Zarima effect. So even if you duplicate in some way or you generate another one, you won't get the effect again. So it's literally one and done. Now, people have been th uh, theorizing this could then combine be with this deck, sorry, which is like the Raza reset your hero power uh, package as well. Raza in the past was very good. It required you to be Highlander as well, funnily enough. Uh, this one doesn't require you to be Highlander. Your hero power gets refreshed whenever you play a card. That's a lot of value, right? Obvious synergy with Papercraft Angel that sets your button to zero. And Chaos Crafter that generates you zero cost cards for resetting the button. Also, three stars. I think if you combine the right Raza package with the Dragon package, you are just being so unbelievably greedy that... They kind of trip over one another eventually. I've seen people going like, yeah, we can have the extra turn with Zarima, and then we'll have Raza, and then I'll have the Rena button, and then I'll reset, and I'll get another turn for, like, machine gunning down my opponent. No. It's too many, like, moving parts. You're going to have to get them in, like, a very specific order to play them. Your opponent's going to kill you before you do this. Let's be real. So I think you're really going for one or the other of the packages, and I don't think you'll combine them together. That being said, I still don't think Raza is good enough right now. I just don't think the pool of cards is good enough for Raza. Now, there are some theoretical decks out there. I actually think rather than going for uh, Reno and turning into the Reno button and waiting for the Reno button to be the one that says gain two mana when you push the button, you play your Papercraft Angel and you get two mana for pushing your button, i.e. your button is minus two mana, which is kind of weird. Uh, I think the better version of it will be with Hedanus instead, that you're just going to use the default priest power and just keep healing Heartbreaker Hedonis uh, and he'll just machine gun down people with five damage at a time. Is that good enough for its own deck? I'm not sure, but maybe it slots into another package. Either way, all these pieces aside, I just don't see it being better than just default control priestess right now, where you generate many Amonthals. I think that is better value and more consistent value, so... I'm sorry, Priest! I like your new decks, I like your new archetypes, but I'm not convinced by them. 
Uh, that being said, repackage, and you know, this might surprise you, uh, four stars. I think this will go into Control Priest. Control Priest, I think there's a little bit of you know, debate of where Control Priest is at right now. I think some people would say it's a tier three deck. I think it's at the low end of tier two right now. And I think this just slots straight into the deck. It's an incredible control card. The other thing that made me happy to put this at four stars as well, as I've mentioned before, if I think a card is going to be in multiple decks for like the next cycle, then I sometimes bump it up with initial cards. Repackage will be in every single control piece from now until it rotates out again. It is such a good control option. It's better Psychic Scream. Psychic Scream was insane in the past. I think this one is insane too. So four stars. Uh, and the final two cards are just mysterious i believe this is for some sort of zoo priest deck we have chalk artist where if you draw, you draw a minion it transforms into a random legendary on keeping its cost obviously you don't want to put this in deck with zarima or raza or amonthal i.e 99 of all of the decks out there for priests ignoring the automaton one which also by the way you wouldn't want to put this in the automaton priest either as you want the automatons but anyway so yeah, these cards look like for some sort of separate zoo deck. Purifying Power lets you silence minions. There's actually not that many mi minions in the game right now with bad effects with good stats. So all in all, I think it's going to be one star. I actually tried to put together a zoo priest deck with these two cards in it. And it is so awkward. Like, it just doesn't feel great. That being said, if there ever are more cards printed for this, like, zoo priest archetype, if there's any bad cards that need silencing or even more spells that silence your minions with a positive effect on them... Then I actually could see these cards rising up the tier list. They're actually pretty solid cards. It's just there's no archetype around them for it. So yeah, this is my spicy priest deck. I don't think priest is going to be as good as people are speculating. One final word on this the, the Raza package. I do see a world where Raza is just slotted into the control priest archetype as like an additional little bit of value, an alternate win condition that eventually you might play Reno, and then you can just machine gun you down your opponent whilst you're playing the game. Maybe that's where Raza is. If that's the case, then it will be a four-star card, not a three-star. But I don't think Papercraft Angel and the single-long buddy in the neutral set will get into that deck. They're just they're too bad on their own. Anyway, now we go into Rogue, another interesting class with a pretty defined... A pretty defined archetype within it. Obviously, the intention here is to play some Pirate Rogue. We had Dig for Treasure, Toy Boat, Bargain Bin Buccaneer, Sandbox Scoundrel, Water Cannon, and Shoplifter Goldbeard. I've also included Sodney Water Dancer and Everything Must Go Into This, as I think these will both make the Pirate List as well. Sonya will allow you to generate more pirates, which Shoplifter Goldbeard will then start throwing them at the face. And this deck has a lot of draw innately in it. And I think Everything Must Go will probably get into that deck as a zero mana summon two four cost minions. Dig for Treasure, Toy Boat, Bargain Bin Buccaneer, Water Cannon, Goldbeard, three stars. I think the, the Pirates package is going to be a tier three deck. I saw a lot of people playing it, and this is the first one of these I've recorded, by the way. After the Theorycraft stream, so I did see a bit of the Theorycraft stream. Again, I wasn't in town, so I only watched a little bit of it. Uh, but yeah, most of the times I saw this deck, it would have some insane pop-off turn with Goldbeard, where it summons, you know, like, five other minions, and they all start smoking the face, they start smoking minions, it does a big, big tempo swing. The problem with it is, eventually you just run out of gas, right? You're insane, you have insane gas from, like, turns three till turns well sorry your mana cost sorry of three to your mana of like six or seven insane 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 and then suddenly once you've drawn through like all of your deck and all of that you just suddenly run out of everything and any deck that survives until that point and control decks right now especially control decks with a combo finisher are very very strong right now and i think most of them can survive through this uh play so i think this is only going to be a three star deck the other thing I noticed as I was trying to put together this Pirate Rogue package is that the one drops for this package aren't that good, in my opinion. You kind of, if you want to be this like hyper aggressive deck, which is kind of what I thought it was going to be as I was watching the cards be revealed, you kind of want to play, you know, on curve, one, two, three, every card being really good stats. Your opponent every turn going like, holy moly, I have to remove this card. And I don't think Pirate Rogue has that. It's just really weird. It's just like, it has this big pop-off turn. It's almost like a test deck, but it's a little bit more aggressive than normal test decks. And instead of test, you have Shoplifter Goldbeard. So 
I might be misreading this, maybe it does slot into tier 2, because there's a big tier 2 vacuum right now of all the decks probably aren't going to be viable in a tier 2 right now, barring like the Dragon Druid. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there might be better decks out there for the aggression. Now you may have noticed there are three of these cards I haven't given a rating to, uh, that's because they're all getting 5 stars. What I think will be the top rogue deck will be a combo rogue deck where you try and draw through your entire deck, you get the golems that every, like, for, sorry, it gets mana discounted to buy one, and it starts off at 20 mana, I think it is. For every card you draw, you're going to use your Gaslight Gatekeepers to send your hand back into your deck, you're going to redraw your entire hand, and you're going to start vomiting out free 8-8s, eight eights, free 4-4s. Four fours. That's going to be disgusting, and then once you've done this, like, miracle aspect of the rogue deck, uh, you're going to play your Scoundrel to get a... Discount on the next card you play, and you're going to start sonya people in the face. And there's so many different Sonya combos out there. I've seen someone postulate this one with the, the deck hand, right? You get the... I, I can't remember the name of this pirate, sorry, but it's the one mana pirate that gives pirates one attack when they're summoned. You play one of those, you get a zero cost, you play another one. Every pirate you play gets plus two attack. You start playing your charging pirates, they charge the face. To clear board space, you start backstabbing your own minions to you know free up a little bit more room. I think that is going to be so unbelievably strong. I think this is the only deck that is actually going to be from this set, but that will go into tier one, like a complete new archetype. And it's going to be this one. I actually, and again, this probably isn't an unpopular take. I think Sonya Water Dancer is by far and away the best card printed in this set. It is so unbelievably busted. So I'm intrigued to see what people are going to do with it. Because as I said, I've seen people generating weapon combos where you use your, your, your like the, the, I can't remember what it's called, the, it's not the Toxic Dagger, Deadly Poison. They put Deadly Poison on a weapon, for example, the Mining Weapon, and I could definitely see the Mining Package going into this, like, combo-y draw, hand-based rogue deck to just allow you to live until you get to enough mana to make these combos go off. But yeah, I can see putting the, the Mining Weapon out there, which has three draw ability and it only costs one mana. You throw in a Poison, that gives it, or whatever it's called, you know, the, it's Deadly Poison. Gives it two attacks, so it becomes a 3-3 three, three weapon. You get a zero-cost copy, it's a 5-3 weapon. You get another one, 7-3, uh, play the other one, 9-3. Then you play, obviously, Vil Valera's Gift. That generates you another one, that generates you another one. And I think pretty soon, at, you know, one point, you're going to have this, like, 13-3 weapon that is going to be like Necrolord Draka. It's just going to come up a little bit later than that. So opponents probably can deal with it a little bit better. Unlike that Miracle deck, though, which didn't have that many answers for minions, you could put in some value cards to try and find ways to deal with these uh, big minions. You can also, and I think Defn will go into this deck, play Silence. Taunt is cheating. Silence the Taunt. You're not cheating anymore. So yeah, all in all, and there's also another one which I saw people postulating where you... You use Bounce Around featuring Garona there are other cards called, and you bounce this back with uh, Reno, and you can set off a Reno combo that does 32 damage as well. I can't remember the exact numbers for that and how it exactly works. Uh, but yeah, it's really obnoxious. Other thing I noticed in the Theorycraft stream, by the way, if you didn't see it, and I don't know if this was a bug or what, someone played Sonya as one cost, so they played Scoundrel and then played Sonya, and it generated a zero-cost copy of Sonya. If that's intentional then this is going to be even better than I thought, because you don't have to do the combo in one turn then. You could do two separate combos. You could try to do, like, two-turn kill instead, which is probably more consistent than the OTK. Less barriers of failure, and it just keeps the threat alive for your opponents. Like, holy moly, they still have another Sonya. Oh, and also remember Shadow Step is still in the game, so you're going to be bouncing these cards back anyway. If you don't get the kill with Sonya in one turn, bounce it back and try again later. Don't worry about it. Anyway, as I said, I think this card is going to be giga-busted. So watch out for that on day one, Sonya OTK decks. Final two cards for Rogue. One of them is Thistle T-Set. I kind of like this card. It's more for the Tess Contraband Rogue-type decks. There's almost zero support for that archetype anymore, so one star. And then finally, the Crystal Cove. I think the Crystal Cove was meant to go into this pirate deck. Uh, it's really, really bad. One star. There's no way this makes the the pirate deck. It is so anti-tempo. And when you think about it, the very best case, it's three mana for a location that if you had a 1-1 one, one boy on the board, and you could get 1-1 one, one boys from the water cannon, it gives a minion 3-3. Three, three. Is that good enough right now in Hearthstone? 
Probably, yeah, because Warlock plays a one-mana spell that gives a minion 3-3 three, three for a turn. It's more important, though, that spell is one mana and not three for the location. Sure, you get three uses out of it, but it's it's too slow. You don't want to be playing this, as I said, you're playing this on three, right? The next time you push the button is on... And if you play this on three, you may not push it, so... Let's say you push it on three, though. There's a minion on the board. You next push it on five, then at seven. If you're an aggro deck, by turn seven, I'm bricking it. I'm like, holy shit, is my opponent not dead yet? <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm in great danger. So, yeah, I think this card is bad. I actually think if this card was at 5-5, five, five, which was originally what the the location the Crystal Caverns did, it turned your minions into 5-5s five, and got nerfed into 4-4s, four, and this is what it's referencing. I think if this was 5-5s, five, I'm still not convinced it would have seen play in the Pirate deck. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. All right, finally, we have Shaman. And Shaman is very chill, very easy to do, because I think nine of these cards are intended to go into the same deck. I believe that the strongest deck from Shaman will be Highlander Shaman, despite the fact that I also think one of the T1 decks is going to be a play Death Knight deck, and inherently the plagues make all Highlander decks worse, right? So... They have that problem. However, there is so much value around this deck, irrespective of the Highlander conditions. I think you will still run the Highlander cards. Shaman's got so many great cards right now. Why not run it Highlander? You can beat down other people with Holiday then. It's only the Death Knight decks you have issues with. And if you get to the Death Knight decks, you just try and generate some insane value turn with Shudderblocks, your Hagathers, the Wish Upon the Stars. I can definitely see it still being able to beat it. Anyway, as a result, Highlander Shaman right now is sat around... I think it's actually dropped into tier 3. But I think with these cards, you're gonna, it's going to bounce it back up again. So, I've actually given all of these 4 stars. I think they all go into Highlander Shaman. I think they're all really, really good cards. The only exception of this is Incredible Value, which I don't think we'll actually get in the deck. So, 1 star. I think Incredible Value... There are some high rolls, but in general, it's a pretty bad card. It's, it's 7 mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. That's not good enough anymore. Uh, the final card which I've missed off this, and it may actually still go into Highlander Shaman, is Sand Art Elemental. I think you're more likely to want to run a uh, two of these to maybe use your Shudder Block to make the Elemental go off three times. You get plus three attack and Wind Fury. That's pretty, you know, offensive. Uh, I think this is going to see some play. I think some testing, so I'm giving it two stars. But there's just not enough support for this weapon face Shaman deck. There is uh, Turn the Tides, which gives you plus three attack and gives you a three, three with Rush. That would probably go into that deck. But if you look through the actual Shaman weapons, they're not that good. I mean, one of them is obviously the great weapon, the six mana, three, two Wind Fury weapon. But then you don't need the Wind Fury from the elemental. You're just gaining plus one attack playing this or plus three if you do it with Shudder Block. Basically, I think the juice isn't worth the squeeze on it. I think there's easy ways to just buff your weapon without this card, so... I know sometimes you are going to get high rolled by this and someone's going to play Shura Block and then they're going to have the weapon up and they're going to play Sand Art Elemental and it's going to be my sixth attack weapon and then they're going to play Turn the Tides and then another Turn the Tides and another Sand Art Elemental and soon you're getting hit by a weapon for 20 damage because of the Wind Fury and you're going to lose. But I think that it's so specific this combo. It's like you have to play Shura Block and then you need to have these... You need the weapon preloaded, and you need, like, four of the cards. It just won't be a thing. Now, if there's any other cards printed for Shaman, and they've had this... They've had this as a character in the past, that means that their hero gains more attack, or there's more weapons out there, especially if they ever get printed a very high attack weapon with no Wind Fury, then obviously revisit this package, because it'll probably be kind of busted. For now, though, I, I don't see it. Anyway... I only have one more of the star reveals left now. Next time I'm going to do Warlock, Warrior, uh, and the neutrals. I will also, at the end of this, do the event cards, I think. Uh, the event cards, they came off the 10th anniversary. Obviously, they're not quite the same as the Wizbang stuff. In fact, they're in the game right now. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I know how good they are right now. But I'm going to kind of predict how good they're going to be when Wizbangs comes out. I'm also going to do the, I think it's four cards that went into neutral that have never been in the game before. So I'll give them a star rating as well. So watch out for that tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.